is on the types of text used for instruction of beginning and struggling readers. Specifically, I'm focusing on the students who depend on schools to become highly literate, that is, the children of the poor, who typically aren't reading in kindergarten as is expected in the common um, core era. There seems to be a perception that there's something that could be characterized as natural text for the purpose of uncovering critical linguistic information for these young readers. But when it comes to the texts that scaffold this information for beginning readers, what type of text is truly natural? Here's a recent Caldecott indicating that it's an outstanding picture book. It looks very different than the Newbery Award winner on the other side, but is a picture book natural? And does its natural designation mean that it's appropriate for instruction? By the same token, is Owl at Home a natural text because it's published by a trade division of a publishing house? And the text on the right-hand side is unnatural because I wrote it with the aim of supporting young children's literacy acquisition, and I have published it myself. In domains of learning where there are cognitive, ocular, and motor dimensions similar to reading, the materials for beginners differ substantially from those for proficient or even transitional learners. Beginning pianists aren't expected to read the bass clef before they have at least some fluency <coughs> with the treble clef. Neither are they expected to play sharps and flats until they have a modicum of fluency. In a domain like piano playing, progression is important. And yet, when it comes to beginning reading, we seem conflicted. We don't want text given to beginning readers to be too engineered. Text should be natural. Maybe a reason why reading researchers regard instructional text suspiciously has to do with our history. Many may associate instructional text with the tedious repetition of high frequency words. Now, Dick and Jane retired in 1962, but the genre of primarism continued to be prominent in beginning text through the late 1980s. Things changed rapidly with the California adoption in 1989 when they called for authentic text, by which they meant texts from trade divisions of publishers. Well, it turned out that these texts were easy for teachers to read aloud, but not so much for first graders, especially children of poverty. So primary teachers began asking for other texts, and quickly a cottage industry arose, mostly in New Zealand at first, that supplied thousands of little books that tended to have syntactic or story patterns and it had illustrations that often depicted something in the text that children could label. Over a 20-year period, these texts have become the go-to material for beginning reading. The perspective appears to be that a text with a strong picture text match and repetitive elements is natural, and that leads to reading acquisition, a yet untested assumption. Now, Decodables entered the uh, picture with the 1997 Texas textbook adoption and were mandated in much of the No Child Left Behind implementation. Now, most of us would agree that these are unnatural, and in fact, it turns out that they aren't very supportive of beginning reading instruction. But at the present time, core reading programs cover their bases. They provide all three texts that I've just shown you from recent times, trade books, level books, and decodable books. Now, these texts may seem to have a similarity to the aspects of a beginning reading diet that I described in a reading teacher article in 1999, concrete, high frequency, and phon phonetically regular words, but I'm not so sure. I'm going to suggest an alternative model that includes conceptual knowledge as well as linguistic knowledge for beginning readers. And by conceptual knowledge, I'm referring to texts that help children of poverty get new knowledge and also learn that texts are sources of information. In addition, informational texts tend themselves to a repetition of words in a way that good narratives don't. With respect to this alternative model, in terms of linguistics, we always begin with concrete words. So concrete words provide the content around which texts are written. And from those concrete words, then we begin to pick high frequency and also decodable words. Now we can find lots of evidence for attending to different kinds of words. 
But what we don't know is how long it takes beginning readers to absorb new linguistic information. How much repetition do students need with different types of words? Another question has to do with the unit of repetition. Concrete words likely don't need to be repeated as much as more abstract words, but how much repetition do words, particular kinds of words, and word parts need? For example, if a student sees snack repeatedly, how quickly can they recognize a word like track or fracking? Right now, we can conclude that be uh, beginners need at least a modicum of repetition of a core set of words. Beginning readers likely need to have hundreds of books with at least some consistency. And finally, the instructional texts that I've been describing are only part of the story. Time spent with instructional texts needs to be matched with time spent with the best children's literature through read-alouds. Again, an emphasis is on the content. So if we've been reading about dogs and cats in the instructional text, then our read-alouds are about dogs and cats, but with a much broader view that includes both classic and modern text. And I am with inviting you to visit us at Text Project where you can get the beginning reads that illustrate the alternative model for free download and Text Project's Pinterest site where we curate texts such as the Unite for Literacy and Mustard Seed text. Thank you very much.